You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of The Interview right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. We've got a very special guest in this week's episode. I'm joined by a legend of Scotland's women's football. Scotland legend, former Glasgow City, former Rangers, Celtic, Murrow, Sunderland. The last endless amount of clubs you played for, Suzanne Mulvey. Suzanne, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you onto the show. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. No worries. How you been? How's everything been so far? Good, yeah, yeah, not bad. Um, just the usual, everybody else is trying to get back into the routine as much as possible, like everyone else. Definitely. See, obviously, uh, since you retired from football, you've went to kind of recruiting young athletes from in America. Like, was that always a plan when you retired from football? Yeah, no, not at all. Um, when I was younger, I kind of got offered a few scholarships um, and various reasons. I never, ever, you know, took that opportunity. Um, I don't regret it, I don't regret anything, everything that happens for a reason, I firmly believe that. Um, but since um, since retiring, um, I, I was doing a bit of scouting um, for sending girls over to America. Um, and during that time, I, I did a bit more research, um, I've seen what an amazing opportunity it is, um, reaching out to some coaches. And because I was doing a bit of scouting, I wasn't able to get involved more kind of with the, the, the girls' um, journey to America. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to get more involved. I wanted to help more in terms of helping them develop here before they went over. And then also as well, checking in and making sure they're okay when they're over there. Um, so that's when I decided that rather well, than just do a bit of I wanted to actually go out and, and try and do it myself, um, which has been um, interesting, obviously, starting up a, a business during the pandemic. Um, challenging um, but really really rewarding um, I've brought a, a few girls on board who are just absolutely fantastic in terms of their attitude um, their commitment um, all kind of from different walks of life and um, they'll all go different places and you know their journeys will all be different but um, to be there from the beginning of their journey um, obviously helping them improve before they go over there and then I'll be really excited to watch them over there and see how they, they go and develop and where um, this takes them into it, rather than staying in Scotland. Um, I'm a massive, massive fan of Scottish women's football, the SWPL. Um, the opportunities are, are growing all the time, every single season. There's more and more opportunities, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but for some people, that isn't the right route in terms of going from kind of under 17s or under 19s straight up to the women's league. It's such a big jump, and I feel that's where so, so many girls. Um, miss out or fall away from the game which is, is a real shame completely just fall away and quit football and that's what I'm trying to prevent I'm just giving another option for players that have got a chance to develop for four years you go over to America uh, you have multi million pound facilities you're playing regularly you're getting an education which is obviously really, really important at the same time um, but you're able to go away and develop for four years and whether they choose to come back um, to Scotland where it's a better player that's came back or, you know, they stay in America or go professional in another country. Um, it's just a, a really exciting opportunity for players to go away and develop for the four years. Um, so I'm absolutely loving it. Um, made some really great contacts in America already. Um, lots of amazing coaches, lots of different opportunities for girls. So it's really, really exciting. Brilliant. Obviously, we'll touch about in your career as well. You started off your, your early days at Hibs. What were your early days at Hibs like? Um, amazing, um, I absolutely loved it. Um, from Edinburgh myself, um, moved to Glasgow now, but I'm this one from Edinburgh. Um, Hibs fan growing up, um, I was in the Hibs Kids Club where you got you know tickets to the games and meet the players and everything. And so for me to, to go in and play for Hibs was amazing. Um, kind of when you're you grow up, you want to as a, as a footballer back in the day, I wanted to play for Hibs, but you never thought you'd get that opportunity because I wasn't a team or you didn't know. If there was a team, um, so to get that opportunity was great. I, I started off at Hibs under 16s, um, and it was Walter McGill and Carson Ralton who took the team, um, and they were just amazing. The, the effort and the, the work that they put in to help us young girls was just phenomenal. And I'll always remember, I think at the time, we probably didn't appreciate 
you know, just the amount of effort that they put in. But looking back, they were absolutely amazing for us and really, really helped us, helped myself go from the under 16s and develop and, and walk straight into the, um, the obviously the Hibs ladies team. Um, when I was there, it, it was amazing. Just that that step up, obviously, from you know, your your well young girls then going up and it's it's women, it's ladies, and they welcome me into the team and, and some of the players that I played alongside there were, were absolutely amazing and helped me so much on my journey. Um, it only kind of took, I think it was the second season where we actually won the Scotch Cup. So that was kind of when Hibs started, you know, their journey kind of to, to the top. Um, we won the Scotch Cup, I think the next year we won the league, got to play the Champions League. So uh, it was an amazing from me going from under sixties up to ladies football to get to kind of one of the best teams, it was just it was amazing. Played with the likes of Susie Shepherd and Colin Hamill helped me so much being a striker and kind of just being on the pitch beside her, her experience helped me so so much. And David McQuinney, who was a fantastic player, so naturally talented. Joel Murray, in the next year after I joined, yeah. she joined, she's still at Hibs. And so some great, great talented players and some really good memories looking back on it, so it's great. Brilliant. How did the move to Iceland come about? Um, it was at that time um, I was in the Scotland squad as well, and um, a player that I played in Scotland for, like Michelle Barr, um, who's currently coaching over in America at the moment, um, she put my name forward. Um, the team, um, IBB, they, their striker um, got injured, and they reached out to her and said, You know, any young strikers who could help us out, and she put my name forward. Um, I, I literally got a random phone call from an Icelandic coach. Um, saying you want to come, you want to come over and play, and it, it took me totally by surprise. Um, but the timing was really good. Um, there was only I think a couple of games to go to the end of the season, and theirs was the summer league. So rather than missing out on any any football, I think it was two games I missed the last game of the season and the first game of the next season. And um, so it was a summer a summer league summer football that I got to play over in Iceland, and it's a great experience. Um, I think I was nineteen or twenty at the time, twenty yeah, I was twenty at the time. Going over there, um, I went over with Susie Shepherd, um, who's at Birmingham now. Um, what a great time I had over there. It was the first time that obviously I got to experience being what you know professional football was like. Um, trained every single day. Um, it was a little island underneath Iceland, so we had to fly to away games and everything. It was crazy. And um, got a wee flight across to the mainland, and just it, it was such a good experience, but really eye opening for me because I'm quite a a strong physical player and to go over there and they were all strong and they were all physical so for me it took me a bit of time to adjust um, to that but as soon as kind of adjusted I absolutely loved it it was a great great experience um, and I met some some great great people over as well and um, just the culture as well they all spoke English um, which was great I think I only learned one Icelandic one while I was over there which was great for me of course <laughs> um, it dominated that was like you know I was like to share with the but that was it no, but an absolutely amazing experience and I absolutely loved it um, and I'm so glad that I, you know I went over there for the, the few months that I did it was great brilliant you had three spells at Glasgow City how did you find your time there? Um, the, the first spell was at a join them just before um, they were heading down to a pre-season tournament and in that tournament um, I got injured, I picked up a knee injury so that, that was the first spell kind of ended I couldn't get really back into the team at that point so I left and moved on to Celtic um, the, the, my first spell back in 2009 I absolutely loved it, it was, it was a short season it was when the league went from um, the, the winter season as, as you call it traditional season into the summer season so it was a, a short season um, I absolutely loved it I think we won kind of every competition playing in the Champions League um, probably one of the, the best games I've ever played I scored four goals in the one game in the, in the Champions League so um, that whole season was fantastic um, I, I ended up picking up a, a back injury at the, the tail end of that season and that kind of kept me out of football for in three years, I never played in football at all. Um, so that, that's how that came to an end. But if, if that hadn't happened, I, I truly believe I would have stayed at Glasgow City for longer during that time. Um, I absolutely loved it. Um, my last spell was 2013 um, when I joined Eddie Malicky Black there. And what I learned there during that time from Eddie and also some of the players that I played alongside was just absolutely amazing. Um, like Sylvia Ann Ross. You know, she's such a professional. I've never met anybody that, that's so professional as her in, in terms of just everything. You know, you walk in a change room and she just wants everything to be perfect and professional and the way it should be, you know, in, in the dressing room before the game, out in the park. Her standards are so, so high. 
Um, and I truly believe that, that having a, a few other players at the Glasgow City have obviously helped keep Glasgow City at the top for as long as they have. Um, I left there just because I wanted a new challenge. You know, Glasgow City were at the top for so, so long. And it was fantastic winning the treble that year, winning everything. Um, but I, I wanted a new challenge. I needed something different. But what they've got there um, and what the likes of Laura Montgomery and, and you know, Carolyn Stewart, what they've done there um, is absolutely fantastic. And it's, it's obviously helped the women's game, not just Glasgow City, but it's helped the whole league. It's helped every other team that's kind of followed suit. Um, the, the work that they put in and the effort that they put in is obviously grown the women's game so, so much. Um, and I guess under appreciated times, people recognise that at Glasgow City, but just in terms of women's football as a whole, you know, Glasgow City have helped develop every aspect of the game and, and helped improve and obviously set the standard for other teams to follow. Um, you've also got the likes of Rangers and Celtic now pushing right up there, you know, trying to kind of put Glasgow City at the top, but it was, it was Glasgow City for years and years that set that standard. Um, so, so to play there was, was amazing. Um, I've got some fantastic memories there, um, you know, winning cup finals, winning the league, obviously playing in the Champions League a couple of times. So it, it was absolutely amazing. You know, looking back, I think at the time you don't always get to appreciate those moments because you're too busy focused right that's the game out the way you're moving on to the next game, focusing. So you don't really get to appreciate that, you know, every game and every small moment. But but looking back, um, just some amazing, amazing memories. And, some great players I've, I've played alongside, and um, say so the likes of you know Leanne Ross, um, and you know Kat Linden as well. She's one of the best players that I've ever I've played alongside. Um, just a, a national talent, but I think as well because she came from Germany, her professionalism I think is another reason why Glasgow City did so well because that was kind of a standard that we weren't ever professionals before. That I think her coming over, she she was saying, well, we need to be professionals. And act like professionals before mm-hmm. we are professionals. And I think her doing that also really, really helped Glasgow City kind of to get to the top and stay there for so long, definitely. Brilliant. You played 37 times for Scotland. How much of an honour was it to play for your country? Um, there's, there's no, you know, I'm, I'm actually a bit struggling at how, you know, how you can actually describe what the feeling's like. Um, for me, every single game was an honour. Um, I've kind of had a stop-start career in terms of being out with injuries or taking a step away the game to, to try and concentrate on my career or whatever. Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of the time I was involved in the squad, I was maybe on the bench or not involved in it as much as I would like to have been. Um, but to have 37 caps is, is a great achievement. There's so many players out there that would love to even just get one cap. So to look back and say I've got 37 caps is, for me, I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. You know, I've worked hard and... Um, I every team that I've went to, I've tried to give my best, and, and obviously it's rewarded at times for getting called up to the Scotland squad. Um, so thirty seven caps is absolutely phenomenal. There's some great, great games that games that stick out um, in my memory, and and you know for me it's like one one game in particular. We didn't even win the game, but I won't even see the scoreline. But we got hammered from Russia, um, and what sticks out for me was it was Shelly Kerr who was the captain that game. Mm-hmm. and um, her, her speech before we went out, and as I say, it wasn't down to the speech, you know, that, that we didn't win, because the speech really got me motivated, but it, it was being there, you know, as a young player, and the likes of Shelley Kerr, who every time she stepped out of the park, you know, she wore her heart on her sleeve, mm-hmm. and our, our, our speech was just about desire, you know, how much do you want this, how much do you really, really want it, and that's always, always stuck in my mind, that one, you know, I've never any other captain that I've played under and um, I've never remembered the speech as much as I remember that and from that moment on it was kind of like every time I was stepping out in a game I remembered her speech and it was like it was her speech that got me motivated for the next game um, and, and obviously you know playing against uh, sorry playing alongside the likes uh, you know Joe Fleeton um, Pauline Hamill um, if you know the UK Rhonda Jones you know Stacey Cook we're, we're going back Mandy Burns you know there's just so many talented, talented players that I've got to play alongside that obviously club level you don't always get to, to play alongside yeah. these players so getting the chance to, to actually play alongside them at, at international level is fantastic and say that I've travelled all over the world you know playing against some amazing players as well you know I've played played against well, let's say um, England international players you know like, you know, yeah, Jill Scott, uh, Alex Scott, Jill Scott, um, Kelly Smith, you know, all of the players and, and obviously like so fucking we're playing against Germany when they were world champions, um, played against the US national team, like said Carl Lloyd, Alex Morgan, 
So to say that playing against them and you know being on the same pitch as them, it's, it's a great, great achievement looking back and, and one that I'm very, very proud of. Um, for any young players, you know, uh, keep working really, really hard because to, if you reach the top, you know, like take advantage of it, just work hard because for me that, you know, obviously it's a great song to play for your country and, and I absolutely loved every minute of it. It was great. Brilliant. You had spells at Rangers, Sunderland, Celtic, Men, Motherwell. What were those spells like? Um, so when, when I left Glasgow City in the last spell there, as I said, I wanted a new challenge. Um, it was Andrew Hind and Michelle Barr. They were at Rangers at the time. And um, they had, I spoke to them and what the vision that they had for Rangers, I really, really liked. Um, I'd never worked with them before. I'd obviously played in the international set with Michelle Barr before. So the opportunity to, to work alongside them, um, I jumped at the chance. Um, Rangers were a team that were kind of up and coming. They were always around about maybe the third or fourth spot. Um, so for me to, to obviously help them out, they would were, were say that they were missing a goal scorer and they wanted me to, to go along. Um, so it was a, I absolutely love my time at Rangers. Um, we we just met, we were second, we finished second that season, um, just behind Glasgow City. We were, we were close, I think, in, you know, kind of 1 0, 2 1 against Glasgow City. Um, we done amazing, we, we were way above, you know, Celtic um, Hibs that season. Um, and the players that I got to play alongside the Rangers, you know, um, Natalie Ross was there, Megan Sedden, um, and a very young Erin Cuthbert was 15 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was playing, uh, and she played every game and for the women's first team at 15 years old. And, and you know, obviously, then you just knew what an absolute talent you know, she yeah. was. Um, so that was great. Watching her in training was brilliant because you knew she was skillful and you knew that coming up against her, she was going to do a trick to try and beat you. And you're like, right, I'm ready for this, but she still managed to beat you because she's just that talented. It was great. And even you know, I was an older experienced player, but I, I love learning every training session, every, every game, I love learning. So I would watch her and try, even though she was much younger than me, you know, I just try and take things to every player. So it was great for me, um, not only looking at players around me, but this young stuff coming through as well, just kind of watching her and obviously seeing her journey now as well. It's been you know, amazing to see that, that I played alongside her when she was younger and watching her basically now reach it. She just reached the Champions League final with Chelsea, yeah. which is a um, so yeah, no, it, it, Rangers, it's absolutely fantastic. It was a, it was a shame the way it ended there because um, Angie Hind and, and Michelle Wild got the opportunity to go over and actually um, coach a university team in America. So right. they kind of like, um, Angie left at the start of the season and, and Michelle left halfway through the season, um, which is a shame because w- when they left, it did kind of change and we lost the momentum a bit. Um, and that, that is the only reason kind of why, why I left. The momentum has gone. Um, obviously, like I said, Aaron left, Natalie Ross left, um, Megan Stedden left, a few players left at the same time. So that was why I decided to, to move on as well then. Um, and from there, I went on to Sunderland. Um, I'd left Rangers and I was probably getting back to probably the fits that I'd ever been. Um, at the end of that season, the Rangers had a, a Scotland training camp and with the, the Euro test. And I was kind of right up the top. That as I see the effects that I've probably been back in a while. Uh, Kim Little was, you know, the only one that I beat. She was right up there. Um, so I knew that I was fit, and I knew that I wanted to keep that fitness. And I thought the only way that I'm going to be able to do this is by trying to get a professional contract somewhere. Um, I want to train every day. I want to keep this fitness up. So I actually just phoned Sunderland myself. I never had an agent rent, and I just phoned Sunderland and um, spoke to their, 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 their a manager of the, the ladies team. Um, that work kind of from an office and I just phoned her and said I'm a Scotland international I'd love to come down on trial would that be a possibility and she said of course and um, so drove down to Sunderland um, after the first training se- session the CGA we went to sign me drawing. so for me it was great obviously I just you know took it upon myself I wanted to go professional so um, it, was, it was amazing I absolutely loved that just walking into that setup I'd, I'd played for Rangers and Celtic before and they've got great facilities um, but there was no integration between the women's and the men's team at that point. So to go down to Sunderland, where I walked in, um, my first day there, I walked in and said, go have some breakfast. And you had Jermaine Defoe, John O'Shea, Wes Brown, all just sitting there, you know, at the mm-hmm. next table and asking you, asking all the girls how their game went at the weekend and um, asking about training. And, and then going to the, the first training session, we we done the warm-up. We always done the warm-up with the youth teams, the men's youth teams. Um, and so it was like, like uh, Jordan Pickford, you know, the goalkeeper, yeah. it's him that was kind of good. So we were training with him. So even just getting that, you know, you're getting quite high intensity training with the boys. Um, 
and, and just getting to play every day. You know, you were training in the morning, getting a lunch at the facility, and going up to the office, doing all the press stuff, the interviews, um, the photo shoots, everything, and then training at night. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. I, I played five friendlies, um, managed to score five goals, I was feeling great, brilliant. And then I ended up, literally um, a few days before the first game of the season, I ended up coming down the shingles. Right. Um, and that, that kept me out for a long period of time. So I ended up having to just call my time short there at, mm-hmm. at the end. Um, I think it was probably a combination of um, just the travelling, the fact that I was probably training more than I'd ever trained before. And I was doing, I was travelling, I was, I was going up and down to um, Sunderland twice a week. So I think it just took its toll on me um, a bit too much and I ended up um, leaving. Um, but it was a shame because I really loved it. And in that season, um, we obviously done really well. That was our first season in, in the Premier League. Um, so for me, I would really have liked to have stayed there and seen kind of how I would have done playing the season. Um, but just getting an experience of what it's like to, to be a professional and play um, as a professional, it was a great experience for me. Um, and from there, um, kind of when I took cover from the shingles, I moved on to Celtic. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it was brilliant. I love my time at Celtic. Um, I feel that it's a, a great, it's got a great, you know, community family feel about it. Celtic. Um, they they were integrated with the women's team. Sorry, the men and the women's team were integrated at this point. Um, you know, we, little things like you had the box um, for the men's games. You know, so we could go and watch all the men's games. Um, before big games, you get you know your meals. The full team would go into a pre-match meal. Um, absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved my time at Celtic. Um, we were doing really really well. We were kind of close to um, Glasgow City and Hibs. Um, so for me it was great. And and obviously looking now at, at how they're doing, obviously like said Celtic and, and Rangers go professional. It's great to see some of the players that I played alongside side there and um, that they're still there and they're yeah. obviously they've got. Contracts like, like I said, you know, Kelly Clark, Chloe Craig, eh, Natalie Ross, but they have you know professional contracts. It's amazing the the progress that they've made. Um, so it's absolutely fantastic to see that um, and to see how the clubs have grown. So it's great. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, then moving on to, to Motherwell, um, it was a different challenge for me. Um, it was Eddie um, had asked me to go and help them out, help them gain promotion. Um, and obviously that, that was the main reason kind of for going there and helping Motherwell get promoted and obviously it worked, you know, the, the team that they yeah, that he had pulled in, um, we got promotion, I think it was record points, um, you know, that, that we got that season, um, it was amazing, it really, really was good, um, I loved it, it was great playing alongside a lot of players that I'd played with over the years that were all kind of pulled back together again. Um, and just the club as a whole, you know, Motherwell, it's a great community feel about it, it's fantastic, absolutely loved kind of every, every game, every moment, and it was the first time since under-16s I'd been a Hibs under-16s captain, but it was the first time that I'd been a captain as well, so for me it was a new experience, and um, one that I really, really loved, um, and obviously being in, you know, the kind of SMP2, and then for us to get to the Scotch Cup final, um, we won't mention the scoreline, but you know, to, to get there and to enjoy that occasion. Some players had never ever got to a cup final before and, and probably, you know, won't ever again. So for them to experience that that day, um, it was it was amazing. It really, really was good. And a proud moment for me as well to walk the team out, you know, for that kind of pyro and, you know, everything like that. It was, it was a great occasion. Apart from the scoreline, you know, it's a good memory to look back on, definitely. Brilliant. How much has women's football changed and progressed since you started playing? Massively. Um, when I started at Hibs Ladies, um, they were the season before they had been training once a week. And when I started, that was them just stepping up to, to two times a week. Um, the, sorry, that was a low battery there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the Tuesday and the Thursday, we, we started training. So um, for me now, looking back, you know, you've got the likes of Rangers, Celtic, Glasgow City, we've got full time professionals. Um, it's a massive, mass, some massive, massive steps, and I think as well what probably you know the position that you're in. I think that what's kind of underappreciated at times is the people like yourself who are driving the women's game forward, who are really, really helping to try and promote it. Because of course it's important the players on the part, the coaches, but for everybody else, 
um, you know, whether it's people that kind of work for SWPL or people like yourself that are, that are trying to really, really, you know, grow the kind of reach um, for the game. It, it's amazing. Um, I think obviously social media is a massive thing as well. You know, that helps yeah. in terms of people staying connected. Um, but in terms of just the game itself, you know, you can see everything, the fitness levels, the skill, just everything is grown so much. And for me, you know, looking all the way back, training twice a week, um, you were playing on grass pitches that it sometimes were like cow fields that were, they weren't really, really that bad. To now look at some of the facilities that, that you're getting to play at. Um, obviously as well, like say, the international players that are coming and playing in the league as well. Um, Obviously, I've got to play, you know, alongside a few of them, kind of at Glasgow City. Um, but now, you know, they're kind of spread throughout the league, and obviously mainly Rangers, Celtic, and Glasgow City. But it's great to see that there's players from all the world that are now wanting to come and play in our league. It's, it really is great. It's, it's amazing, you know, for kind of everybody involved to see that we we are like that people now want to come and join. Not only is it great for the young players coming through, but other players want to come along. So it's just it's amazing. Um, as a whole, um, and there's obviously still a long way to go, but in terms of the, the differences that started, it's just night and day. It really is. It's, it's you know, the, the changes are absolutely huge. Um, and and I've, kind of, I've kind of got to experience a bit of both, you know, right at the beginning of my career and then the end of my career where, you know, like at, at Celtic, they were, they were approaching the kind of professional status, training more and, and trying to kind of act as much as professionals before getting that kind of contract signed. So so for me, it's just been it's been great watching that journey, being involved in that journey, and obviously now taking a step back and being able to kind of keep watching it grow and grow. It's amazing. Definitely. Who were some of the best players you played with in your career and what is your favourite story from your career in football? Yeah, um, I mean, from every, it's really, really hard because from every single team that I've played um, in, there is some top players, you know, going back to him, so I've kind of mentioned a few, you know, David McWinney, Pauline Hamill, um, Susie Shepard, she was just such a consistent player, she's one of the first times that I experienced somebody that just had a, a, a solid performance every single game, um, and it was just down to a work rate, you know, our, our effort and our work rate, it was great, Um and then going on to kind of Glasgow City, as I say, is Catelyn there, um, Leanne Ross, and um, Sue Lappin was another fantastic player who, I think because she was so good in the air, her aerial ability, I think it kind of gets overlooked at times, but she was such a talented technical player as well. She was great with feet as well. Um, so I love playing alongside her. Um, Chrissy Murray as well, you know, for me, Christy Murray and Jean Ross are probably the two most professional, but we are most professionals, but they too, their, their work rate, <coughs> their, their work ethic um, is what's kind of sustained their involvement and, in, you know, being a professional for so, so long. Very, very, very driven, um, dedicated people, which is, is great for young players. They're fantastic role models for young players to look at them. If they want to reach top, just look at Jean Ross and and Christy Murray, and, you know, if you kind of follow their work ethic, um, you won't go wrong. Um, <clears throat> going on to kind of Celtic, um, Natalie Ross for me was, you know, one of the, my favourite players to, to play alongside. Um, our, our intensity, um, she always wanted to, to link up and play fast, and I love that as a striker. I love kind of working with her, um, so that was, that was absolutely amazing. Um, my, my time at Iceland as well, that um, the striker that got injured, um, you know, the reason why I got pulled over there, and um, Olga Farsef, her name was, um, she kind of got fit near the end of the season, so I actually got to play alongside her in a few games, and I learned in such a short space of time, I learned a lot from her in terms of just movement in the box, just by watching her movement at the time, she was, I think she was the, the highest ever goal scorer in the Atlantic League, um, so to be able to, to work alongside her was absolutely amazing. Um, so I absolutely love that, you know, just kind of watching her movement and um, the little tips that she gave me was brilliant. Um, also as well in terms of the, the Scotland setup, you know, Julie Fleeton, she was just such a fantastic player. Um, I think at the time um, she was playing in America as well, so she was such a big player for Scotland um, and for me to get the opportunity to play alongside her was, was amazing. Um, I remember one of my, my favourite, you know, my favourite games, one of my favourite goals for Scotland was um, we were playing against Switzerland and 
I scored one in the in the first half, and it was it was down to Jodie, and the ball had been crossed into the back post, and most players would have tried to get a header on goal, but she's literally just flipped it back down to my feet for me to tap it in, um, and, and that was in the first half I scored that goal, and then in the second half I picked the ball up at the halfway line, and I just kept running, and Julie's kind of made like two different runs, dragged two defenders away, and then as I'm about to hit the box, she just said. I was about to play it in because she's made this run and she said, just keep going. And I've just kept going myself and ended up scoring. And, and that was like from the halfway line, but she made both the goals, you know, even though people look at go look at that run. Like for me, it was it was Julie Fleet that made that goal for me, just, you know, a movement and then obviously a communication. Um, I've probably missed, you know, quite a few, um, but, you know, obviously in terms of strikers, they really kind of all got and Julie hit me a lot. And, and Colleen Hamill as well, um, my time playing alongside her at Hibs, her communication and what I learned from her. Um, I, I've never had this conversation with her, you know, I've never really told her. So I don't think she knows how much she actually helped me um, mm -hmm. in terms of the way that she used to communicate me on the pitch. She used to talk me through everything and, and I was kind of, you know, 17, 18 year old and she was an experienced player. So to have that alongside you, it helped me so much. And, and that's probably the reason why kind of later on in my career, I've tried to help young players as much as I could, you know, going to Celtic and um, going to Motherwell. As much as I can pass on from what I've learned, I, I love doing it. And, and it probably is down to the fact that I have kind of, you know, the more experienced players help me out that, that I've, I've kind of known the importance of that um, and how much I gain from it. Also, if I can pass that on or I've tied a bit of that on, you know, um, to young players, then, then obviously that's... That kind of for me, that's what it's all about. You know, you're in the game, you get so much out of the game, you learn so much from the game, and and if you can pass that on, and and obviously everything that you've learned, if you, if you can pass that on to them, and then it helps them a tiny little bit. For me, I feel that that's giving back. You know, everything that I've got out of the game, I've absolutely loved. It's amazing the experiences. So for me, just being able to give a little bit back. Um, it's really rewarding and, and obviously another reason why I've kind of got involved with Centre Sports and obviously trying to help young players, you know, going away, just giving back. There's so many great opportunities out there and I think that, um, you know, it's horrible to see so many players missing out and giving up or, you know, yeah. that they've not got opportunities. So just to keep them in the game as long as possible and, and kind of help them on their journey and that's, that's what I want to do and that's what I keep you know, I want to continue doing for years to come. I want to help as many young players as possible, like reach their potential. Because there's so many talented players out there that, that just uh, fell away. You know, in my under 19 squad, like 80% of them had, had quit within two years of leaving the Scotland under 19 squad. And just horrible to see that um, because there was great talent out there. So to prevent that happening in the future, you know, would kind of be the, the greatest award. It's, for me, it's better than scoring a goal myself, you know, seeing somebody go on and, and continue. And, for them to keep scoring it's, it's such a, a great reward definitely definitely Susanna it's been an absolute pleasure for you on the show thanks very much for joining me I've really enjoyed it and thanks very much for coming on no no problem at all Scott thanks okay. very much thanks very yeah. much cheers no